got to find Shaw and Cook out on the perimeter. They're the only two guys in Big East play who have even made a three-point field goal. And they go inside. Nice dump for them with the rebound. And right now, St. John's dominating on the offensive glass. Shaw from deep in the corner. Sweet Willie Shaw. Sometimes he has a difficult time getting it up through all those long arms, but he can go get it. Off the mark on the second, St. John's leads Syracuse 12-7. Meanwhile, a scramble picked up Fordham. Chains his shot, counted, and the foul. Basketball coaches at every level, Gus, will tell you you have to step to the pass. Alan Griffin doesn't step to the pass. He tries to receive it like a catcher. And as a result, Fordham is able to come up with the loose ball. St. John's just out scrapping him right here. And Fordham has been very aggressive on the inside. St. John's this year, very good when they're playing at the Garden. They've won 15 straight, 5-0 and this season. Griffin rises and knocks it down. Set to check back in, and Alan Griffin starts the offense. Shumpert, scoreless so far, forces his way down the lane. No good. Tips it back up and in. That is the first seconds left on the shot clock. Fordham dumps it down to Emmanuel, and the Red Storm turn it over. Now Griffin on the move. Nice move to the basket, and the deal. Brown with the two-hand jam. Boy, nice job by Griffin. He, I thought he got... Allen getting better and better at the point guard spot every day. 7-0 run for Syracuse. Well, you, if you're St. John's, you'd like to get the ball into the zone, start it into the zone before you get down to 15 seconds on that shot clock. And there's, of course, a way to do it. You just step back and drill it. Lead approaching the 10-minute mark of the first half of play. Brown steps out on the baseline and gets the bounce. Boy, nice little touch right there. And Damone Brown starting the game very, very actively. Moving very effectively on offense. Willie Shaw. Oh, tough shot. <laughs> Sweet Willie Shaw. We talked about being aggressive with the basketball, and it applies to Syracuse as well. Griffin doing a great job penetrating past the defense. Nobody rotates over to pick up Damone Brown. And this, we talk about catch and shoot, Gus. That's a guy who's in his... Omar Cook, the penetration. Frees himself again. Nice deal to Glover. And one. That is what makes this kid so special. He almost has eyes in the back of his head. When you're very close to the basket, free throw is. Brown on the baseline. Demone Brown. Really put that pad on his hand, broke a couple of bones in that hand. Shumpert, their leading scorer, has been awfully quiet today. Dwayne, averaging 10 over his last few games inside. Got it. The foul has been called against Mike Jarvis. John Cal calling the technical on Jarvis. So Jim Beheim at the scorer's favor as well as the officials try to sort things out. Now the person who was fouled was Duaney. And so Shumpert is obviously at the line to shoot the technical fouls. Now under the rules, the new rules this year with technical fouls, play picks up after you shoot the technicals where you left off. And so, under any circumstance, you would shoot the technical fouls first. And that is what they're doing as they clear the line. Shumpert will shoot the tech. And look where Mike Jarvis is. He's well on the floor. And you rarely see him get this. Ah, Omar Cook. Gotta be careful setting those screens out on the perimeter that to stay stationary. Shaw foul by Seeley. And a technical foul against the Syracuse bench. So it's getting interesting here at Madison Square Garden. Jim Beheim is very upset because 
He felt as if Selig didn't do anything. Just stood there with his arms up, and Shaw went into his arms. The officials ruled, however, that Selig dropped his arms, and now Jim Beheim wants to know from Tim Higgins, what did I say? <laughs> so Willie Shaw will shoot. And Jim still going at Tim Higgins. And Shaw misses a pair. Well, now those were the technical free throws. Shaw is now going to go the line to shoot defense, but they really can shoot the ball much better. Omar Cook, though, not shooting the ball well. Fordham with the rebound. Cook again, reloads, a rainbow rips it. That one almost hit the ceiling. Griffin with the rebound. Allen Griffin, slickly up the floor. Shumpert wants to take it and buries it. Guess that was with guys hanging all over him, and Shumpert simply has not been it. Ten seconds remaining in the half, and St. John's gets into it. Cook's going to have to make something happen. Here's Omar. Down the lane, the runner, oh, and he gets it to fall as the clock expires. So at the end of the first half, Syracuse leads it 37 to 34. St. John's has not had much luck attacking at the end of the shot clock. Maybe this, they just ought to act like it's the end of the half of the game. Cook with a nice job, jump stop, jump shot. That's the end of the first half. One of the true legends and characters of the college game, former St. John's coach Lou Carnesecca. And back on January 30th, he was honored here at the world's most famous arena, his wife watching. Lou Carnesecca, 526 wins. He was honored with a banner that hangs here at Madison Square Garden for his distinguished career and services in New York City. St. John's staying in the man-to-man. -man. Now Griffin, the runner. Boy, that is a tough, tough shot right there. Shumpert's down. Shaw, dribble drive. It's good. And Shumpert still in the backcourt. As Willie Shaw ties it at 41. We've talked about the transition game, and Omar Cook doing a nice job giving up the ball early, allowing Willie Shaw the chance to make a move with the basketball. To the basket, if you're Syracuse, you absolutely have to convert those kinds of shots. Inside, nice pass, Glover got his man in the air and delivers from Omar Cook. And is able to get it on the inside of that zone. Glover has eight points. Williams curling around the screen, the beautiful finger roll. Jim Beheim having a talk with Brett Dwayne. Syracuse by one. Seelick like back in the game for Syracuse with this four five. Shaw. Counting. Willie Shaw. St. John staying in the man to man, and Sharif Fordham still doing a good job against Shumper. Ah, nice look, Brown to Sealing. Boy, I really, really aggressive in the second half, taking it to the cup. Ties it at 49. Brown from 20. Rattles down. And this is the pace the fans were looking for when they walked in the building. And the turnover has really been the plague for St. John's today. Knocked away, Shumper, NBA range, Preston, 55-49, timeout, Red Storm. We're expecting a blizzard outside, folks, but it's getting warm in Madison Square Garden. And this is one where Selig just does a nice job catching the ball after it's been deflected and passing it out for the shot. That's something that'll recommend you. And he has played in two national championship games. It's Indiana and Kentucky losing both. Inside Glover again. 
And Syracuse just has no answer for Glover. I'll free it up a little more on the perimeter for Sean Cook. Shumpert to Selick. Pretty little finger roll. Selick missed four games when he injured that right hand. He plays with a pad on that right hand. But uh, this Syracuse team considers him a very valuable player. He's a great passer, and we've seen him finish on the last couple of trips. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Playing as if he's been playing point guard his entire life. Shumpert, the kick to Dwayne. He's strong. Tipped up and in by Shumpert. Shumpert. Fordham lets it go, picked up, four on two. Williams back to Brown, jams it down with the right hand. A great decision in the middle by Damone. We've talked about Preston Shumpert and how he hasn't really forced anything. That time he got himself inside, and then the next possession, the fast break, Damone Brown gives it up at half court, gets it back, and dunks it off his own head. 62-54. Shumpert, catch and shoot, rips it, ha ha, Preston Shumpert, he's got 16, timeout St. John's, the Orange have hit a groove. Get Shumpert running off those two screens, getting a wide open shot, that's as open as he's been all day long. Cook, straight away, it's good. Omar Cook. When Jim Beheim just leans the traffic. Taken away by Cook. Here's Omar Cook. In and out dribble down the lane. Got it. Omar Cook with the feline quickness. 14 points now. St. John's trying to make a run. And a timeout on the floor. Jim Beheim wants to talk it over. 3.35 to go. Stay with us here on CBS Sports. The defense dipping close to the half court line. Leaves his feet. And now it's 15 left on the shot clock. You don't want to foul. Knocked away. Nice steal. Fordham. Willie Shaw. Just a little lackadaisical with the ball. Slapped right out of the hands of Preston Shepard. And watch the decision that Fordham makes. Gets it right back to Shaw, who gets clobbered. Fordham with a great job, just hands the ball to Willie Shaw. Knows he's got that three-point shooter behind him, and that obviously draws a huge reaction from the St. John's bench. Wow. So Willie Shaw at the line, where he's 6 of 11 today can tie it up right here. And does. Uh, the garden is rocking, folks. 38. We'll see. One of the things that Syracuse has been able to do to build Knocked this. Knocked away. Omar Cook straight to the basket for the easy layup. Omar Cook, what a great play, just sort of laying around. And here's Fordham again, back at the point of that zone attack. Omar Cook frees himself, the runner. Loose ball, top rebound, and stick back. Kyle Cook has come to play here in the second half. He's got 10. He's done an outstanding job finding those openings for offensive rebounds. Griffin, he answers. What a huge shot. Game was tied at 68 at the end of regulation inside Glover. Now Griffin. Griffin, the Brooklyn board guy, is starting to take over. 
<laughs> well, they're big guys out there. But see, what you have to do is you've got to get down the court quickly. When the referee doesn't have his whistle in his mouth, that's the time to commit a foul. <laughs> Griffin gets the first. And that is the fourth foul on Fordham. Allen Griffin, 23 points. And Fordham has been so effective defensively, you wonder if now having four fouls will force him to play a little bit more passively. So Syracuse, six of six. Make it seven of seven. Jim Beheim. A couple of possessions ago, look at his eyes, look at his face. Wow, he's living and dying with every pass and every shot. <laughs> when it comes to free throw shooting for the Orange, they are 30 of 38. And Griffin gets the first. And some great point guards in the history. So Alan Griffin finds his spot on the line. Young man plays with a lot of poise and self-confidence. Gets the first to go. And the second one good as well. Four. But he has made some big, big baskets. Orange been by five. Some big free throws. Cook. Nice look to cut, block in it. He gets it to go, rather. And a whistle. Cook quickly into the front court. He's got to go quickly now. He takes a three. And hits! <laughs> St. John's refusing to go away. And with 37 seconds to go, it's a two-point game. The freshman from downtown. Rotation. He's already had two guys foul out of the game, so he's going to have to go deeper on that bench than he's nor than he normally does. Five point eight remaining. And the winner of that Georgetown Notre Dame game will get a bye. Well, Notre Dame already has the bye, but if Georgetown wins that game, then they will get the bye as being the number two seed in the West. 5.6 to go. Reggie Jesse finds Donald Emanuel. Short. Bangor the follow at the buzzer, but that's not enough. Syracuse. Defeat St. John's 93-91 in double overtime. So for Dan Bonner, this is Gus Johnson saying so long for Madison Square Garden, where the Orange have defeated the Red Storm. Coming up next on CBS NCAA basketball action as Georgetown takes on Notre Dame. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA basketball championship. <laughs>